So hi, welcome to this introduction to Metabolites, um, the home for metabolomic experiments and derived information. Um, I'm Thomas Payne, I'm part of the Metabolomics team here at EMBL EBI. EMBL is the European Molecular Bio uh, Bio Biology Laboratory and part of EMBL is the EBI, which is the European Bioinformatics Institute. And I'm a curator for uh, the database Metabolites. Um, so a little background, um, the goal of EMBL EBI is to ensure that the growing body of information from molecular biology and genome research is conveniently accessible to all facets of the European scientific and biotechnology community in ways which promote scientific progress and global competitiveness. So that is uh, to make biological based data open source and available to all. Uh, the omics generate a vast quantity of data and metabolomics is no exception. Um, furthermore, metabolomics is still developing. It's still a developing field and what we can interpret today may be greatly expanded tomorrow. Uh, learning from the omics that came before, we try to uh, be ahead of that of the curve. And so that means to develop good protocols and reporting systems to support the integrity of data to help develop tools and make research available to aid future developments. Uh, more recently, the FAIR principles were developed, and this was to address an urgent need to improve the infrastructure supporting the reuse of scientific data. Um, a diverse set of stakeholders representing academia, industry, uh, funding agencies and publishers came together to design and jointly endorse a co uh, concise and measurable set of data principles, aka the FAIR um, principles. And there was a specific em emphasis on enhancing the ability of machines to automatically find and use the data, in addition to supporting its reuse by individuals. So examples include uh, unique identifiers, terms searchable by humans or machine, data associated with their province or traceability, um, which means clear, accessible metadata and controlled vocabularies or ontologies. So uh, the question is, can metabolomics learn from other omics and not repeat many of the same mistakes that have been made in which a lot of data were collected but little information gleaned? Uh, before, uh, for anyone new, I should probably take a minute to briefly de define what we're talking about. So a metabolite is a substance formed or in or necessary for metabolism. The metabolome is the total number of metabolites present within an organism, cell or tissue. And metabolomics is the scientific study of the cell of metabolites present within an organism, cell or tissue. Uh, and this is nothing new. This is, goes back to um, when they used to smell and, and look at the color of urine. But now we have, uh, but now there's more power in our current and emerging technology, specifically there's rapid development in instrumentation and computation power. And with uh, applications across agriculture, so research in agriculture, including crop protection and engineering, uh, it's important in food industry, product and stress testing in food industry, and in healthcare, so medical diagnostics in healthcare and future applications in personalized medicine. In 2007, the metabolomics community uh, led by the, uh, sorry, in, in 2007, the metabolomics community led by the Metabolomics Society uh, came together with the Metabolomics Standards Initiative. And the focus was on uh, community agreed reporting standards, minimal information checklists, and data exchange formats. The aim of the MSI uh, was to provide a clear description of the biological system studied and all components of a metabolomic study, as well as to allow data to be efficiently applied, shared and reused. Initially, there were five working groups established, which included the chemical analysis uh, WG, the biological con context metadata WG, the data processing WG, the ontology uh, WG, and the exchange format WG. And since uh, Metabolites has used the MSI uh, guidelines to develop a data management method for metabolite study deposition. 
and as as it's great to develop standards and encourage data sharing there needs to be a platform to make the data accessible to all so metabolites uh, which is found at ebi.ac.uk forward slash forward slash metabolites is an open source uh, study repository and metabolite knowledge base it's comprised of two layers a study repository which enables the metabolomics community to share findings, data, and protocols, and to a reference library of curated knowledge about metabolites. That also links to the database KEBI, the Chemical Ent Entities of Biological Interest, which we'll see in more detail later. At Metabolites, our mission is to provide the scientific community with a comprehensive, high quality, freely accessible, Metabol metabolomic resource. We also develop training courses and other resources for the metabolomics community, as well as actively promote metabolomics research. As the largest set of publicly available metabolomics data, Metabolite sees users from across the globe, uh, USA, China, and Europe, and across academia, industry, healthcare, governments, profits, and so on. Metabolites also sees submissions from across the globe, again, from China, USA, UK, Germany, France. We are seeing our submission volumes increase annually with close to 1,000 submissions in 2020, um, with a significant proportion uh, human-based research or mouse-based research. Studies hosted in Metabolites support publications in journals such as those from Nature, Publica Nature, Nature Publishing Group, uh, PLOS, Frontiers, PNS, as well as more specialized journals towards metabolomics. Um, Metabolites is the recommended metabolomics re repository for a number of leading journals. And we work closely with our counterpart databases in the US and Japan. Um, at Metabolites, we capture all metabolomics data across the entire workflow. That is cross species, be that animal, plant, or bacteria samples, across technique and platform, mass spec, or NMR analysis. Uh, importantly, we're constantly evolving to support the latest advancements, which is a continuous open discussion. And as mentioned before, um, our requirements are guided by the metabolomics community, for example, the Metabolomics Standards Initiative guidelines. Uh, most importantly, as an archive, we collect the raw data together with sample and protocol date details so that data can be reused and reanalyzed by anyone. A rich data source you can access without having to go into the lab. The primary requirement for submission is raw data supported with rich metadata describing the samples uh, describing the study samples assay and metabolites and where possible the metadata capture is under underpinned by controlled vocabularies or ontologies and importantly this adds value to studies uh, with additional expert curation and confidence and evidence attribution um, there are many benefits of data sharing from transparency to reproducibility um, to hypothesis generation, to publication, to grant uh, requirements, increase in citations and encourage collaborations. So let's take a closer look at Metabolites. Uh, there are various ways to find information through the Metabolites website. Uh, from the homepage, you can search or browse through studies and Metabolites. Uh, you can browse areas of interest, including studies, compounds and species. And you can use our model organism links to find specific studies and compounds. Uh, you can also search based on specific terms and free text. Uh, looking specifically at the study repository, uh, as mentioned before, you can search based on specific terms or free text and based on areas of interest, including studies, uh, compounds, and species. Um, within studies, you can do a little uh, you can go a little further 
and filter based on technology or organism path. The results uh, will display key information about the study title, the unique identifier, the size, the submitter, organism and study factors. You simply click on the title or identifier to view the complete study. What does a metabolite study look like? Here's an example, MTBS749. One of the first things you will see will be the study status. When, um, when you first submit your study to metabolites, the status will be highlighted as submitted. The study will then progress through in curation to in review and finally public. Next to the study status, you will see the release date and is when the study become pu became public. Underneath is the study title, submitters or authors, uh, the abstract, a box to highlight species or organism, and the option to link to the associated publication, which can be updated at any stage. Following this, you will see a section of tabs that will guide you through all the study information. We have sections for descriptors, protocols, samples, assays, metabolites, and files. In the first tab, descriptors, you'll find keywords describing the study. These act as important search terms, as well as an overview of the study factors. Study factors are variables that help describe samples as part of experimental design. And where possible, keywords and factors uh, should be linked to ontologies. And this will be uh, guided by the online submission tool where options will appear for you, will appear for you to choose based on resources such as o OLS, which is the Emble EBI ontology lookup service and BioPortal. Next, in the second tab, protocols, you will find all the information related to the experimental protocols. The level of detail required is identical to the methods, to the methods and material sections in a paper with references. For example, where samples uh, came from, how they were extracted or prepared, through to how they were analyzed, the treatment of data and methods used for ident metabolite identification. The protocols are central for reproducibility and they're linked to the assays with important parameters such as used as tags to improve uh, data fairness, uh, specific to improve data fairness significantly through readab readability and reusability. In the third tab, samples, you will find specific text mineable information related to samples. There is only one sample sheet per study where each row is a distinct sample. And this includes samples for QC controls or standards. The minimum, the minimal information required about a sample is represented in the name and characteristic fields, columns such as organism and organism part. And as before, submitters are encouraged to add additional information in the form of factors such as disease, gender, time, treatment. In accordance with the Metabolomic Standard Initiative, uh, these templates were also developed for the deposition of more specific information depending on sample source, for example, clinical or in vitro or plant samples. And we are implementing uh, these templates in the submission tool on an ongoing basis based on demand. In the fourth tab, assays, you will find specific text mineable information related to assays. For each sample, the specific instrument information is provided in detail. For example, chromographic system, column specifications, mass spectrometer, together with the data files, the raw or derived, uh, giving you the opportunity to download and reanalyze the work. If you look closer, you will see it. The assay is divided into sections, starting with a pro protocol ref column, which describes the specifics of that part of the assay or protocol with controlled vocabulary to again help improve data fairness. So studies using the same approach are easily findable. In this case, it's a 
LCMS positive mode hylic assay. As you scroll through the assay sheet, uh, through the columns and tags associated to the protocols, you will see details for the corresponding data files, the raw and derived and metabolite tables. The raw spectral data files are files directly from the analytical platform or instrument, and the derived spectral data files include open source converted files or any other derived files you may wish to include. As mentioned before, a primary requirement for study submission to metabolites is raw data and or an open source version, along with supporting and complete metadata, and of course, a metabolites user account. Of course, a study can have multiple assay sheets, for example, positive and negative ionization, reverse phase or helic chromatography, GC and LC, uh, 1D NMR, uh, um, 2D NMR, et cetera. Uh, you can have as many assays as, you, as uh, the experiment warrants. In the fifth tab, uh, metabolites, you will find information related to the metabolites identified in the study. Each row is a metabolite or metabolite feature peak unknown where metabolites have been identified, the provided compound names are assigned to a specific ID using the KEBI ontology. Uh, this is a controlled vocabulary, uh, a controlled ontology, which means the metabolites you are looking for can easily, easily be identified and linked. There are columns for structural information, such as smiles and inchi, uh, descriptors for metabolites, as well as intensity values or metabolite abundances. Submitters are encouraged to submit further information in relation to metabolite identification. So for NMR, this includes chemical shift and multiplicity. For MS, this includes mass to charge ratio, fragmentation, modifications, charge uh, retention times, and so on. And of course, uh, you can have multiple metabolite sheets, also known as maths or metabolite annotation files. In the last tab, uh, files, you will find both the metadata information, which is the uploaded information previously described, encoded in the standardized open ISA uh, tab delimited format, as well as the raw or derived data files. All public studies and associated data in metabolites are freely available for you to download. Uh, you can download individual files or whole folders or search for specific files or file types. Um, while it may not be obvious with the new website and the online submission tool, metabolite submissions are powered by the ISA software suite. So experimental data gets submitted in ISA tab format the uh, investigation study assay framework helps to uh, collect and communicate rich and complex experimental data, such as you know, uh, sample characteristics, technology and measurement types, sample to data relationships, so that the resulting data and discoveries are reproducible and reusable. Again, our uh, fair data principles. So um, how to uh, submit a study? You can submit studies to us through our new guided submission, step-by-step -step, and online editor tool. The online editor allows you to come back and edit your study at any stage during the submission process. And you find this under the My Studies page. Working with uh, larger metabolomic service providers, phenome centers and core facilities, as well as companies, uh, we have developed a template driven submission pipeline for ease of submission of standard protocols and assays. For example, utilizing tools such as MZML to ISA for direct extraction of protocol information from raw data files. All, submitter, all studies are manually curated for high quality. We support submitters through a highly responsive help desk and a study will remain private between you and the metabolites team until you tell us otherwise. 
On the Metabolites website, there is a quick start guide to help and explain the whole process in more depth, uh, with the first step to create an account with Metabolites, to um, select submit a study to create a new study. Um, and when you submit a study, you'll be given a permanent accession number, which you can use for uh, manuscripts or communications correspondence. Um, then you can add, edit and upload your data. Once you've cleared validation and you can start the curation process, once there's successful curation, uh, your study will be in review where you will be given a private link you can share with collaborators or journal editors. Uh, and then finally to publication. Um, we've been working hard to provide a simplified submission system. Uh, as part of this, you can now submit and, and edit your study completely online without the need to interact with uh, uh, an ex software such as ISO ISO Creator. Once the guided submission is completed, the study is available in the online editor for further amendments, and you can switch between the guided study view and editor using the icons uh, along the side. So what to include in the study? Uh, in the first section of the presentations, you can see examples of the information found in metabolite studies. The guided submission will take you through the required information step by step. It will guide you through raw and sample data upload, creating assays and provide you with controlled vocabulary or ontologies options in relevant fields. If you don't have all the information to hand, don't worry, you can access and edit your study at any time from my studies page, including adding samples, extra assays, data and much more. For those working in larger laboratories uh, with um, LMS software, you may be interested in programmatically accessing any part of the study, uh, public or private to you from our API, our application programming interface. And as mentioned before, once a study is created, it will appear uh, in your My Studies page. From there, you can edit and update using the guided submission or study overview option, options. Um, studies can also be downloaded, the ISA metadata edited locally with, uh, for example, Excel, and then be uploaded. Um, a quick note on study completion and validation rules. Um, you must ensure your study passes all the required validations. If the study displays failed, please look at the study validations tab to find out more. There are four validation flags um, in the study validations tab, which can be viewed individually using the drop down menu. So these are successful information, warning, error. You must address all errors and should also address warnings where applicable to progress your study. Um, validation rules range from missing data to defined headers, character lengths, unique IDs, file types, referencing, and so on. The validation box will disappear when all validations are successful. Before progressing your study, uh, please give an approximate date when you would like the data to be publicly accessible. Um, please note the curation process requires a minimum of four weeks, so you will not be able to set this earlier than the four weeks. Um, and once in curation or the re review stage, you can change this at any time by contacting us directly at metabolites-help at ebi.ac.uk. Um, just a reminder that there are four stages, um, submission, which uh, equates to study creation, uh, curation, in review and public. The in curation is a step to assess uh, whether the study is complete and fulfills the requirements of metabolites. And to progress, you will need to change the study status to let us, to let us know when it's ready to start to be curated. And this can be done only once the validations are successful. 
Uh, so a couple more example studies um, to show you how to navigate from a user and curator perspective. Um, and this is really the best way to learn uh, about the metabolites uh, format. So uh, first we will see the familiar reporting of a study ID, title, uh, submitters, authors, and abstract, um, you know, metabolites, uh, MTBLS881 is the ID. This, the title is the uh, metabotype in patients journey reveals early predisposition to lung injury after cardiac surgery. Uh, but quickly, we can also identify organism, um, acquisition or technology and uh, the metabolite data, um, as well as any associated publications. Um, for example, here we have uh, homo sapien or human samples. We have a, an NMR assay uh, and we have an untargeted uh, metabolite experiment. From the sample sheet, again, uh, we can see that there are 591 rows, so that, that, that are samples. Uh, these are all human, uh, all serum samples, these being known as the characteristic columns. Um, and as we move across, we can see um, time elapsed from CPD, which is a, a surgery, um, as a time point with the unit hour and with six levels from minus one to zero, two, four, eight, and 20 hours. We can also see another column associated to oxygenated, deoxygenated blood with two values, pulmonary artery and left atrium. Uh, these are known as the factor columns. Uh, from the assay sheet, we can see again, it's an NMR assay with 591 rows, so that are samples. Uh, with identical experimental conditions, uh, 0 0.2 uh, molar phosphate phosphate buffered DTO, uh, pH of a 7.4 at 298.1 Kelvin with the uh, proton NMR. And as we move across, you also see details such as uh, instrument, Brooker Advanced, uh, Brooker Advanced 3, 600 megahertz spectrometer, um, the number of trans um, number of scans, 256, um, the pulse sequence, the magnetic field strength. Um, and then um, you'll see the, the free induction decay data file uh, associated to zip files and the derived spectral data file, ML files. Um, and remember that these assays are um, associated to the protocols. So whatever you find in the assays, you'll be able to extract from the protocols and the protocols will give you more in-depth information. Um, and from the metabolite sheet or the metabolite annotation file, we can see that there are 63 rows that are, these are metabolites or you know features, peaks, unknowns. Uh, the majority here have been assigned to KEBI, um, again, the the database for uh, chemical entities of biological interest with chemical formulas, smiles and inches. And as we move across, we'll see values for um, chemical shift, multiplicity, as well as intensity values or metabolite abundances. And then we can look at the files to see all the files and download the files. If we take MTPLS78, for example, uh, which is um, SpaceM reveals metabolic states of single cells. SpaceM is an open source method for in situ single cells metabolomics that integrates microscopy with multi um, imaging mass spec. Um, again, we can uh, see the organism, we can quickly identify the organism, the acquisition and technology, and the metabolite data from the homepage, as well as any associated publications. And we can also link to other resources such as Metaspace, um, EMBL EBIs, uh, biosamples, uh, and other EBI resources such as ENA, et cetera. Um, so here we can see that there are uh, multiple organisms from Homo sapiens, uh, humans, or, or to mice, to there are also blank and reference compound samples. Um, we have multiple assays. We have an LCMS assay and we have mass spec imaging assays and we have untargeted metabolites experiments. Uh, again, we can look at the protocols 
to um, to get a real sense of detail required. Uh, what's to note here is that if you have multiple assays, you can use subheaders to um, deline delineate between um, experimental protocol details. Um, and you can again look at the files and you can see all the assay sheets and uh, metabolite files. Um, but instead of looking online, you can easily uh, download these, open these with Excel. Um, and you can see that um, as you can see that there are 123 uh, rows. We can see that there are some human samples, some mouse samples, there's blank samples in there, and there are reference, com uh, reference mixture samples in there. Um, we can all associate to these characteristic columns. We can scroll across and we can see the factors um, on the right-hand side. Um, and then we can also do this with the assay sheets. Um, we can download the assay sheets, open them in Excel to show that again, there's, there's 16 rows here. Um, these are samples under all under the same experimental conditions, um, the, the same uh, image in mass spec um, assay. And as we move across, we see all the uh, details of the assay are linked to the controlled vocabulary or ontologies. And again, we can download the math file. We can look at that and see that this has uh, 1,446 rows. So these are metabolite features, peaks, unknowns. Um, again, here, luckily, the most uh, majority is assigned to Kebi uh, with the chemical formula. Uh, smiles and inchi with um, master charge ratio modifications and charge of the um, iron, um, as well as intensity values. Um, so the metabolites also has a compound reference library. Um, study identifiers and species information are shared with the compound reference library to build metabolite profiles with easy access to experimental evidence base. Uh, this is an ongoing project for us. Uh, looking specifically at the compound knowledge base uh, and metabolites, uh, you can uh, search again based on specific terms and free text, as well as browse areas of interest related to species, pathways, uh, reactions, NMR mass spec, and the results will, be, uh, will display key information about the compound name, the unique identifier structure, and description. Uh, reference metabolites, the, these metabolites are annotated with chemical properties, pathways, reactions, NMR and mass spec, spectra, and relevant literature, as well as linked to other resources, specifically Kebi, the uh, chemical ontology. Here we have an example of a reference, compound reference, acetyl CoA. At the top, we have the compound name and unique metabolites ID, followed by another series of tabs to take us through all the information related to the compound. In the first tab, you'll find information related to chemistry, so structure. Um, you can display, we'll display this, the formula, the mass, the smile, uh, and the inchi. Uh, in the second tab, you'll find information related to biology, uh, specific to species, uh, studies, publications. Uh, and in the third tab, you'll find information related to pathways from multiple sources, wikis, pathways, keg, react home, and there'll be a drop down menu to filter for specific pathways and species. Um, and you can see here the keg pathway, react home. In the fourth uh, tab, you'll find information related to reactions. So reaction specific link to the RIA database, for, uh, for example. And again, you'll have a drop down menu to filter for reactions. And in the fifth tab, you'll find information related to literature from the Kebi database, and the results will be an abstract to, ex uh, to explore further. Each section is continuously being developed by us, and we're open to feedback. For further information, training, and guides, please see the um, EMBL EBI training website. Um, and just a final note to say that um, all public studies on the metabolized database are shared with Metabolome Exchange, an initiative set up to provide an aggregate and notification service for the metabolomics community, um, as well as with, we share with the Omics Discovery Index across Omics Aggregator uh, developed by uh, BD2K. 
Uh, here's the team. We're a small team of curators and developers. Um, and we are always welcoming feedback. So um, for example, we want input on any features you would like to see included in metabolite, in metabolites, uh, how best to capture assays and metabolite annotations, what other kinds of data you would like us to capture, what interactions and other resources you would like to see. Uh, and please feel free to reach out to us and email us at metabolites-help at ebi.ac.uk. Um, we also will start up our training course again this year, uh, Introduction to Metabolomic Analysis 2022 at the end of March. Um, we have a great um, program of talks and uh, trainers from experimental design and quality control to LCMS data acquisition and processing to mass spec imaging acquisition and processing, um, statistical, statistical analysis, um, Galaxy with workflow for metabolomics, um, talks on metabolite identification, data interpretation with open access resources at Embol EBI, and um, case study examples. We have a 2022 special webinar series, methods in bioinformatics, including topics such as gene ontology, proteomic data analysis, variant calling, cancer, image analysis, all starting in March. So register for those. Um, and now I'll open up the floor for any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tom, uh, for the webinar today. And uh, thanks, Pamela, for answering some of the questions by typing in. Uh, so while Pamela is answering some questions, uh, we have a few open questions, Tom. Uh, so first one, you can read how to perform comparative analysis of different metabolites reported in different studies. Um, that's a great question. I think uh, you'd have to go back to the raw data. That's not something we do a lot of. Um, I guess you'd have to look at literature and see what methods they do. But from my understanding, we pretty most likely have to go back to the raw data and look at um, the processing methods between them and see how you can compare. It's very difficult to compare relative abundances that's the way you're going to look at it. All right, next question from Lorna. I think Pamela is also answering it, but if you have any comments to add. Uh, so Lorna is asking, I think you mentioned it is possible to add references to other resources such as ENA and biosamples. Are these references in the keywords section? If so, is it uh, then possible to search on these keywords? Uh, yes, these reference these uh, resources will be part of the keywords, um, and they will also be included in the sample sheet. So um, we'll be able to link uh, link between resources much better and easily. Uh, 